came in. Luckily enough, she was on duty. So when she came, I asked her, what are they saying? What is Mikonia? The only thing she told me, just relax, just relax. So what do you mean by 3CM? You told me I was already on one. What would I be doing in 3CM? Imagine a married lady who is delivering who doesn't know this. It was smooth, I can say. Yes, there was pain because of the first delivery. I was in pain for 12 hours, you can say 14 hours. But nurses, paramedical staff, they told me to just hold on, you know, we are not going to operate you. Hey, beautiful people! Yo! I am so excited in this amazing episode. This is the second edition of The Real Talk with Moms. And today, I have two amazing moms right here with me. I'm sure you can't wait to see these amazing moms. And uh, before we go there, if you're seeing my face for the first time, I am your parenting coach. I am Oye, Oye Lion. And to my left, I have my very good friend, who is also my pastor, Rachel, who has been married for 13 years and a mother for the last one decade. And I'm sure today you're going to learn a lot about her. Rachel, can you just say hello to everyone at home? Hi, everyone. I'm glad to be here today. And uh, I believe you're going to be blessed Definitely. as we share together. Just hold on, don't touch the dial. Because I tell you, it's a promise. It's not going to be a waste of time from us to you. And to my right, I have one of my friends also, and her name is Nidhi. She's married for 17 years. Yes, you heard me right. 17 years. You can see you have a lot to learn. And these two today are ready to share their experiences on being a wife, being a mother, and I'll just let you meet Nidhi and she's going to be saying hello to everyone at home. Hello everyone, hope you are doing fine. It's glad to be here. Thank you so much. And I'm very sure that both of you are very happy to be with me today. Of course. I'm very excited. I am looking forward to this amazing episode because just as I always say, I love to learn. I don't take anything for granted. You can see I have my pen right here. Maybe I'm just going to advise you to also get your pen because it's going to be an awesome time. It will be worth it. Trust me. It won't be a waste of your time. So I'll just start on a very simple question so that we kick off from there. Uh, I am going to very start very soft. Let's just enjoy the moment. It's going to be amazing. So my first question to Pastor Rachel is uh, what are the things you wish you were told or you knew before you got married? About parenting or about marriage? I hope I'm clear. Yes. All right, very good. Go ahead. Well, um, thank you so much once again. You're especially welcome. Especially for having me and for having this name. My good precious. I'm very, I'm very delighted. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. And back to your question, um, what are the things that I wish I had been told about marriage, about parenting? I would start with the parenting part. Okay. Um, well, when I, when I got my first child, uh, my parents were around, they came over, and it so happened that they only stayed for a month. So, you know, when you have somebody helping you out, what happens is they do everything for you. Mm -hmm. They, it's like they just babysit you. So you, you just get some rest. They cook. My mom was cooking. And then because I was also lucky enough to be in the hospital, so anybody can feed my baby through the bottle. So that was easy because I would sleep all through. Then when the mom was up, they had to leave. And then my husband also, it so happened as well that my husband immediately, when they were leaving, my husband had to go back to work. His leave has, had already uh, elapsed. So the first day being left with a baby alone, it was, it was just, I, I was just in another world. That's after one month of already being a mother. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now I'm alone Reality in the after house. Your mom. I'm alone in the house with a baby. So my head was just, you know, just running. Because I don't know 
I need to do house chores. My husband is going to come back. He needs to find food. This baby is always waking up after three hours. I need to feed him. I need to attend to him. It was, it was so overwhelming. I remember the first few days, my husband came back home and he would find me just crying. And thank God for him, he would sit me down and tell me, what's the problem, you know? What's the problem? So, and because of the relationship that we have, I spoke to him and, you know, he was like, just take it easy. Whatever you cannot do, just live, live it. it. It's not as important as you think it is. And I tell you people, that's one of the benefits of having an understanding uh, husband. Yes. See, I think I'm still going to bring these two back and we're going to talk about understanding husband. Mm -hmm. When we are telling single ladies, don't just jump into it. Yeah. So there's, there are some things that you need to be grabbing, but we're going to separate that topic later. Yeah. So if you didn't have that relationship with your husband, imagine if your husband is not an understanding man, like, what is the big deal? You have a child. Just make my food and everything. The first one. Yes. <laughs> are you the first one? People are raising twins and I've, because I've seen dramas. When I, when I tell you I've seen a lot with marriages, parenting, believe me. So that's so when you're choosing, don't just close your eyes. I've said, and I'm going to say it again, love is not enough. Love is good, but it's not enough. Go ahead. Yeah, so, and that's how we kicked off. Um, and then when it came to marriage, um, we initially, because we, we had known each other for a long time, uh, so we, we were friends, so we would talk about issues. So transitioning into marriage was, I would say, it, it was quite easy. However, of course, uh, he initially he loved football so much. So even when, uh, you know, both of us would, would be working, of course. So we come home, uh, we need to do some cooking, we need to do some house chores, and he would just see it and watch football. So with time, it used to get to me, and because of the timings of the football games, sometimes it would be uh, maybe late in the hours, uh, late at night. So I would say, come on, I mean, it's time for you to go to bed, and tomorrow we have to wake up early to go to work. Oh, that was good. So I am just going to ask needed the same question. What were the things that you think, oh, I wish I knew this before I became a mom or before I became a wife, if there's anything you want us to know. Sure, I'll start with uh, my marriage. Actually, uh, yes, I've married for past 17 years, but me and my husband, we know each other like from past 20 years, you can say. So we are more of like friends who knows likes, dislikes. So there's, you know, smooth transition when we uh, married. But coming to parenting, yes, that was a task for me. Uh, when I was pregnant with uh, Joshua, so my parents could not make it. So I was like all alone. And we were in Dubai, thank God for the church family there. They really helped us. And uh, Joshua was like a premature baby. So after my seven months finished, I delivered him. And that was not a easy delivery also. Like uh, after 14 hours, Thank God, paramedical staff, they did not give up on me and I delivered normally. So even after my delivery, Joshua started getting, you know, colic pain. And that was so severe that uh, he started crying and, you know, continuously he used to cry. And I don't know, being a, you know, first time mother and nobody around you, just your husband. We were like, we do not know what to do. We rush to hospital, we pray, but then it continues like for the power for the next two months, I can say. Wow. Then I was like, you know, really fed up. I don't know what to do. I told my husband, no, I have to go to India. I need my mother around. So that was the time I was thinking, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. You know, um, maybe I'm, thank God I had enough milk of my own. I never started formula. But then I was, uh, you know, started uh, thinking, is that my milk? Is that I'm eating something yeah, exactly. which is not okay? <laughs> doing this colic pain yeah. and I asked many uh, many mothers there they said no you're doing fine it's completely normal you know some kids they cry but then still that was a uh, <laughs> I can imagine I can imagine the thought that could be going on on your head at that moment you know you've yeah at the moment that you think you're giving your best I'm trying I'm giving, I'm not giving formula and yet my child is still crying so when we say parenting is really a, a process we learn 
maybe by what we see or in the process. At the same time, it's a personal race. At that point, you feel, oh, I need my mommy. At the same time, you know that you have to learn through the process. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe you're an intended parent or aspiring or you're looking forward one day. So note that parenting is very sensitive. Try as much as you can. You can start learning from today. You, can, you don't have to wait, especially when you have people around you. When I say people, it can be family, it can be friends. And a lot of people think, oh, I'm not going to get married in the next two years. I don't need to even look at how to change diaper. Do you know some single ladies, they don't know how to change diaper? No, it's true. True. Not even the old way of putting napkin. No matter, just diaper, like, just thick. They can't do it. Mm. So try as much as possible to avoid using your child for unnecessary practical. Don't expect, and some people are so proudful of themselves. Imagine you looking forward to meet your mom or trying to run to the hospital, or even if you have friends that you know that you're sure that mm. this, this person can help, you would have gone to the person. But some people are so proud, like, I will not go, they will not say I'm not old enough or I'm not good enough. The, the greatest mistake a mother can do is to gamble on your parenting. Don't gamble. We, there is no master of all. No. We are all learning. We are learning. When we don't know it, we pick it again. for help. You ask. Yeah. Even that, ask. So we pick it, we try again. So these are the things that can happen to a first-time mom or a first-time wife. So just note these things. But what you can do to help yourself, if you're a single lady or a single guy, is to try to acquire knowledge. Knowledge is never a waste. Thank you so much for answering that first question. I'm so pleased and I also learned a lot from it. All right, your point on your delivery already brought me to my second point. So I'm going to start from you because you already mentioned how you had Joshua at seven months. Mm -hmm. Would you like to expand on your delivery experience? Because my quest second question says, share your delivery experience with us. Would you like to just expand a little bit? Then I'm going to ask Rachel the same question. Sure. Okay. So uh, as I told you, my first delivery with Joshua, it was premature. I was continuously praying throughout my delivery because I had this experience even before Joshua. I, I lost that one. So like when during Joshua, I was continuously praying me and my husband. And after seven months finished, so I started, you know, getting this pain. And then we rushed to hospital and a doctor said, no, uh, I think this is the time. And we were like, you know, surprised mm -hmm. how this can be. Uh, we haven't even finished eight months, you know. So, uh, but then, you know, it was smooth, I can say. Yes, there was pain because of the first delivery. I was in pain for 12 hours, you can say 14 hours. But nurses, paramedical staff, they told me to just hold on, you know, we are not going to operate you, you will deliver normal. And I just hold on and by praise God, I delivered uh, normal. And during my second pregnancy, oh, it was so smooth, the time of JC. I started getting pain. I completed full nine months. I started getting pain and you know how far uh, from my house the Vakra hospital is just 10 minutes. When I reached to hospital, the moment they put me in the room, I just delivered in 15 wow. minutes. Wow. So yeah, the both experience mm -hmm. like opposite to each other mm -hmm. and I praise God for those. Yes. See, that's what we talk about uniqueness. Yes. It doesn't just start as when they are human being, they are out there. We preach about uniqueness, our child, our children are unique in their own ways and we have to understand. So also pregnancy, delivery, imagine what you've experienced in the first child and the, your second experience. Thank God, just like we always say on this platform, we cannot overemphasize the place of God. I don't know who you believe, but we that we are seated right here, we believe in the power of God and we so much believe in the power of prayers. You heard us say we were praying all through and I believe that really helped. Because like just the song we've been singing, like, he's the one who can turn what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for our good. Yes. If not for prayers, maybe it will have been worse. Maybe it will have been a, another story entirely. But through it all, the Lord showed up. And Joshua is grown now. This is what we're talking about is 13 years. 13 years, fine, healthy, brilliant, handsome. Only God can do that. And see the second pregnancy? 10 minutes at the hospital, 15 minutes, the baby is out. That is their uniqueness. That doesn't mean one child is, you know, so you know, you know some parents pass on these feelings onto their children. This one made me, I've heard that before. 
Mm-hmm. This one suffered me a lot. This one didn't get... No, it's, it's, you know, there's some, we need to grow up as parents. We need to grow up. It's not about them. It's not about you. It's about what it's going to be will be. Yeah. And through it all, there's testimony. So I'll just go ahead and ask Rachel, please, can you, even though I, I know similar story about your first son, how it went and everything, but just by yourself, share one or two experiences for us in your delivery process. Well, um, for my delivery Process, I would say it was quite similar to Mimi's because mm-hmm. being my first baby and I had complications, not really complications, but it wasn't an easy or smooth uh, pregnancy. So towards the end, um, I went to the hospital because I started feeling uh, pain at around maybe 3 p.m. And where we used to live, it was a walking distance to the hospital. so. We decided, because I was only home with my mom and my dad, so I decided, you know what, let's take a walk. We don't need to wait for my husband to come or take a cab. We can just walk because it was just a walking distance. So we walked there. Uh, When we got there, they told me, well, we're going to admit you, but it's not time yet. So because of the way I was feeling, I didn't feel like even eating, and I just thought, it must be time, because you know you're a first parent, uh, it's your first pregnancy, so you don't know much, you're so naive. And we got there, I think by the time they took me to the delivery room, it was later, maybe after two, three hours. And because they had already done whatever process they normally do for you, you know, wash you, and they give you this liquid and all that. So, so what happened is, from the time they took me, I didn't eat. So remember, I had not eaten like the whole day because I was just not feeling well. So I didn't feel like eating. And thinking that because they took me to the delivery room, I'm I was gonna go- deliver I'm just out. gonna, you know, <laughs> I'm just gonna roll. <laughs> so oh, getting there, pain after pain, pain after pain. Luckily they would allow my mom to come in and then my mom would step out and all that. I, from, that is from 3 p.m. I delivered at uh, 3 a.m. Mm, 12 hours. 12 That's a long hours. time. And I remember them, you know, trying to tell me, would you like epidural? I said, no. Uh, would you like this painkiller? I said, no. So we just, we just did it. So, but by the time I was almost delivering, uh, I think because of, uh, I was tired, I was hungry, and when I, I it got to a point, I would ask them, can I have something to eat? And that time the nurse would tell me, no, no you can't. I can just give you water. Mm. So even when she gave me the water, I, it didn't feel good, it didn't feel right, so I had to throw up. Mm. And when it was almost, you know, now everybody started crowding and they started, you know, somebody is saying a word here, mm-hmm. somebody is saying a word here because now you're in shock, you don't know what's happening. And then I started hearing them calling Mikonium, Mikonium. So I'm like, what are they saying? And now because they started calling and saying Mikonium, Mikonium, no, just doctors started rushing in, you know? Mm-hmm. And there was one nurse that was a family friend of ours. So she came in. Luckily enough, she was on duty. So when she came, I asked her, what are they saying? What is meconium? The only thing she told me, just relax, just relax. And by the time the baby was out, you know the way that, because this is what I've been seeing like in movies and you know when your baby's out, they give you the baby, you know, you cuddle the baby. (laughs) They didn't do that. They just took the baby and rushed. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what happened and i was so drowsy i was tired so i didn't really i just asked you know asking her the lady that was next to me like what happened she told me just relax so they took the baby and the other thing that i noticed was the baby was all dark you know the baby normally at the first time even if they are of a dark complexion they are not dark Mm -hmm. so really i didn't even know what was happening so they took the baby i think later on i came to find out what meconium was so now i related it to what was happening so i guess they took him washed him and tried to get him maybe to breathe or mm-hmm. and then they brought the baby back so yeah that was my experience and that, i think that, that's it that's it that's an amazing point 
and it's it's something that we all need to learn especially singles or more uh, married wives or mothers who still want to mothers who oh, they should know better now mm -hmm. but some yet they might not know see because my sister one of my sisters was sharing an experience you know when she went to the delivery room and she was like they told her she's already one centimeter or two centimeters. Like, she was like, ah so i'm not gonna feel much pain i'm almost mm -hmm. to zero she thought she's counting down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, she thought I'm in one. I just need to eat zero and the baby will come out. <laughs> so by the time they, she was told, okay, now you're 3 cm. So what do you mean by 3 cm? You told me I was already in one. What would I be doing in 3 cm? Imagine a married lady who is delivering who doesn't know this. And they said, no, you're going to 10. So you're like, no, I'm going to fit. You're like, you know, it's, this is surprising. I thought I'm counting down. So that these are little, little things that we should get familiar That's with true. for us to know. Even though we can't know all, but at least have an idea. What does it take? How many minutes does it? At least, and the truth is that somebody's experience is not going to be yours. But you can at least learn something from somebody's experience, listen to another person, have a general knowledge about delivery. That was good, that was nice thing that you shared with us, I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to go to the next question and I'm going to start from you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. So what can you call challenges in parenting generally? Now you've shared one experience and that was for uh, experience with your first child. And by the grace of God, you are blessed with three. Three, yes. Three beautiful children now. One princess, two prince. So now I just wanted to, with, and you've been a mother for the last 10 years. So overall, looking forward, backward, right and left, what can you really pinpoint? What are the challenges in parenting? What can you call challenges in parenting? Well, um, thank you for that question. Challenges. Well, the children, uh, from my opinion, they are all different. Mm. Each child is unique. So you might pick a challenge or you might say there's a challenge with this one, but it's smooth when it comes to the other child. Mm. So for me, I would, I, would, I would not really say there's a challenge, but it's us as parents to check and see, uh, to understand your child. You have to be a student of your child. Mm -hmm. You have to know them as individual. Because the thing is, um, like our first child, he was the only one. So we would, and as new parents, we always would give him iPad because we wanted him to be quiet or, you know, that kind of. Mm -hmm. But when we got the second one, the third one, things, things were different now. So, and I'm, every time you learn, mm -hmm. you know, there's no end in this school mm -hmm. of parenting. Yeah. So each child is different. Um, I would say the challenge comes when also you try or you start to compare them. Mm -hmm. Because every child is different. Because one child, uh, they might like it when you just, uh, you know, you can just leave them mm -hmm. and be by themselves. You give them an instruction and they will do it. But the other child wants you to be part of whatever they are doing. They want your presence there. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of different, I would say. But as a parent, uh, for me, maybe when the, the second one came, Okay. trying to because the second one needed attention because he was young at the same time he felt like the first one was older so he always tried to to make sure that whatever you do for the first one it That's must be done for him and it it kind of used to be a, a rival kind of thing because he would make sure that you do something for him as well mm -hmm. and sometimes we would always tell him that uh, it's only that he's your, he's not as, you know, maybe aggressive as you are, but if he was aggressive, he'll also be, you know, maybe hitting you back or, cause he was that kind of a mm -hmm. child, mm -hmm. you know? If the older one had something, he would just go grab. Like he felt like it's his right, maybe because he thought he was young. And also initial stages, every time we would tell the older one, no, 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 give it That's to good. him, yeah. he's a baby. But it, it reached a point we saw that this is not good mm -hmm. because we are encouraging the younger one to always have his way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what I would say. And that really takes uh, parental sensitivity. Do you know it's, it's quite normal for children to feel like that? Mm -hmm. Most children will feel like that, like, uh, I can take it or I'm the youngest. 
a lot of things that are happening like that is the parent fault. Some parents will show their children that you are preferred. It's not directly to what you're saying, but I want to underline it because of our viewers, so that they won't think in their head, maybe you're showing the little one, like uh, this one is more important or you're less important. This is somebody that I know, and that was not the case. The case is, you know, when you, when the younger one feel like I have the right to all, mm. it takes a, a lot of sensitivity for you to do that. If not, it can really be a mess. Sure. And it takes you to be intentional in parenting for you to know that, no, we have to stop asking him to leave. Because, you know, it's natural. You feel like you are older, let it be. But if you're not sensitive, you'll be able to say, no, now we have to stop it. Mm. And that would be a permanent thing. And that would be a problem in future. I've seen siblings before that they don't even, they don't want to be friends, they don't want to like each other because of little things that happened growing up. Mm. So we have to be extremely sensitive in our parenting. Uh, I don't want us to take a lot of time, I'll just go to the next question. Or do you really want to put, contribute to that? And what do you think is challenging? I think it's the same what Pastor Rachel said. Right. So parenting is like continuous improvement process. Mm -hmm. You cannot say at any point of time that yeah, you are 100% sure of your parenting. No, you have to learn each day. And of course, all the children, they are different. You cannot use the same type of, you know, method for the second Just like one. I made a video at the end of this. <laughs> parenting, the, uh, the tell pattern doesn't work. I don't know. I can't remember what topic I put it, but what I said is, you cannot use a tailored approach. Yeah. One size fits all. It's not possible in parenting. Mm, it cannot work. It can't work. And I said something to me today. I said that self-check is key. Well, the moment you feel like, no. I tell people, me coming to teach about parenting, I'm not telling you I know her. I'm telling you what I know, what I feel we can do together. You share your experience. The moment we feel we know it's going to be a problem. So we have to daily check ourselves. What am I doing that is not perfect? for a positive parenting. Sometimes we don't really say it. Yes. Sometimes we are guilty on our children, but because we are so conscious and we are super in, you know, intentional, we are doing few things wrong. But if you can sometimes take moment and pause and take, is this thing okay? Is this, is this child center? This thing I'm forcing my child to do, is it because of me? Because most of the time, you know, we can be so guilty of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You really want your child to go for this particular spot. Not because the child is interested, it's because but for your own self ego. Yeah. Ah, yeah. You want to get into your <laughs> we, my child. We forget that, uh, you know, going back to the Bible, because yeah. the Bible says we are made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. But as parents, we try to make the kids in, in the <laughs> image of <laughs> no, no, it mean, It's true. So then, like, and you know, self and these are the things I've said in the last videos, I've said in the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. You want your child to go for, just go and do medicine, you want your child to be a lawyer, or, not because that is what the child is uh -huh. interested in. Set ego. When you get to your office, my child just graduated in the medical school. <laughs> this is being selfish as parent. This is yeah. being not sensitive, you know, insensitivity in parenting. And these are the things, little things that we need to work on. So I'm just going to ask you, uh, Nidhi, I has been um, a wife and a parent been, you know, I, the truth is that I am a wife. I'm a, I'm a mother. And I know that sincerely, it can be challenging can be challenging but how have you been able to manage being a wife and a mother so when it comes to parenting it's not only me as a wife will decide it's like both of us as parents we decide you know rules of our house yeah. and what is good for our children what parenting skills we are going to follow so it's like you know teamwork I can say so yeah of course like as I said both the children are different so when we discuss, when I discuss with my husband, you know, maybe this is not a uh, right way to go with JC the way we did with Joshua because she is like completely different than Joshua. Joshua, I felt like during his time, he was very easy child. Even now, you tell him one time, Joshua, don't do that and he will not do it. And JC is just like opposite. You tell her and <laughs> she make sure that she do that. So yes, uh, we as parents, it's like a team effort. Mm. It not goes like only me will decide okay. and only. So I, I want you to talk regarding in the aspect of, you know, you are busy with your husband. Mm. You need to give attention to your children. How has it been, you know? It's really challenging. You will still want to make sure that everything is set in the house. The children need attention. Okay, maybe you have a scenario of what happened. How were you able to manage? I still want to be a very good wife. 
Meanwhile, you know, that time, you still want to be a very good mother. Mm-hmm. Mm. They you getting my point? Yes. So how yes. have you been able to manage things like that? I can sometimes it's overwhelming. And naturally the way men are patterned, thank God for our husbands. Which I can boldly say that our husbands are amazing and they are understanding. However, we are not still patterned the same way. Mm-hmm. What we are going to see in one glance, men will not see it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Not all men. Most men will not see it. Mm. So sometimes you see one to like, maybe you've seen something that the child needs attention now, but he's not seeing that part. Mm. I see if he let's do this time and, you know. So how, I don't know, maybe I'm clear enough in this question. Yeah, I'm getting you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm clear enough. So is there any area you've been able to, okay, I'm managing my, okay, now you need to cook. I, do you see that you have help or something? Ah, the metals. And if you have help, how have you been able to still be mom to your children? How are you still being able to do self check on your children that is not the housemaid that is? I don't like to call them maid today. Okay, by the way, I forgot to mention earlier that Nidhi is an engineer, a civil engineer, so she's always busy. So now I want Nidhi to actually tell us how have you been able to be. I know you are not just an engineer, you are, you are a lead engineer, a manager. So how have you been able to manage your role as this? You're busy at work, parenting wife and everything can you just how how are you yes so it really requires you know time management because by the time i reach home it's like half of the day is past yes. like 5 5 30 i reach home and kids generally they used to come by 2 2 30 so uh, my help she used to give them food they go to a small nap and by the time they wake up so i arranged with uh, you know our kids that when you wake up you have to finish your homework by the time mommy comes i'll check your homework and then we'll go through your uh, day work and we'll see what what are the tasks for the next day you know so this is how i'm gonna manage each day so this point is i think clear to both of them that by the time mommy comes home we must finish our homework we must finish our studies so that mommy will come she'll just ask you know like you know in general so talk, routine you know, for, them and for each day they already used to do routine they come back from yes. school they just have lunch by your help and they do their homework by the time you come back even though you are tired yes you still have to check the work i need to yes so the routine that has been set did you set the routine or your house help Yes, of course. I set the routine with Very her good. also and she knows that, you know, by the time I come, uh, what the things I expect from her, you know, to, of course, to after like cleaning the house and stuff like that, then uh, she knows like, you know, what things I want my children to have. For example, in lunch, she, she used to keep the salad ready, not just, not only the junk food, never give junk food, you know, on weekdays at least. Then um, she makes sure that they finish their homework. And uh, of course, when I come, that time it's like I have limited hours, you know, just two to three hours. So that time I have to divide between children and my husband, of course. So I make sure that at least one hour I give to my children. Okay, I go through them, not just, you know, go, going through their homework, but I make sure that, you know, I check with them what they did the entire day, how, how their day went. Mm-hmm. And any experience they want to, sh- you know, share Thank with you. me, because JC once she start, she never want to stop. <laughs> she want to give her like, you know, entire how what she did at school, uh, what did she play at school, what she, uh, you know, did at home. So everything, even Joshua. Mm. So I so said the good thing I've learned, and I want people to learn in this process is, you make sure the the house rule is clear. Yes. See, because if a lot of people, I tell people, don't feel bad if you are not at home. Don't forget that the work you are going to do is also for your children to give them a better life. Mm-hmm. But you have to just be sensitive and be intentional through the process. Because I've seen parents that in the name of, I'm making money for my children anyways, and they are careless about their children. No. You understand? Mm-hmm. Your grown-up or your grown-up child should understand the rules, mm-hmm. the routine in the house. Everybody must be on the same page. Yes. Like you said, don't give them junk. Salad, she knows it's salad. Mm. And no matter how tired you are, which every parent should emulate, you still give time for the children because the best way to be a good parent and to be the best friend of our children is to ensure that it's time for them. If we don't give them time to listen to what they, what they want to say, 
they will look for solution if there is a problem. Mm. You can't say because the way we stay is much safer than other parts of the world and we know that things are still happening. Mm-hmm. So yes. we have to be their friend, we have to embrace them, we have to let them talk. These are the, some of the things that parents are careless about and I want everyone who is listening to us to be intentional, to be conscious about this. Give your child time, mm. give them time, let them say whatever is on their mind and don't shut them up and don't ever tell them you're lying. Even though it's hard to believe. Mm. Some things are really hard mm, to believe. Mm, mm, yeah. And sometimes you really know that your child is not saying the truth within your mind, maybe about your house health, mm. but never say, no, stop, stop that, you're lying. Because by the time something is going to happen, the child will not be confident to tell you again. Mm. So these are the things we need to work on. So Pastor Rachel, don't forget I said she's a pastor. So I has been a parent, a mother, and a wife. I has been the experience. Wow, well, um, I would say so far so good. Uh, just as Miss Nindi has said, uh, normally we have a routine in place. Um, so, because our kids, you know, here, they go half day to school. Mm-hmm. So, to be, to be married, you need to be in partnership with your husband. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure, with your spouse, you need to be in partnership. So like for us, our picking of our kids from school, it starts there, you know, we, we go together. Unless, unless, you know, somebody has a meeting at that particular time. Because the other thing is uh, the school area or the school environment, the parking is a headache. Mm. So, and you have to rush, pick them up, and then drop them and then rush back to work. So before, before pre-COVID, uh, we used to get a driver that would pick them, you know, go to my house, then get the house help, mm. go with the house help, so the house help would just go in, mm. pick them. Because mm. now you have to pick them from individual classes okay. that, that mm. time. Mm. So definitely, you, you just can't send anyone. Mm. It has to be somebody that is consistently uh, going there, mm. that is known by the teachers. So when COVID came, uh, now we don't have a house help anymore, so it's been difficult. So we decided we'll be doing it ourselves. Um, it's not uh, it's not easy, mm. but uh, it's worth the sacrifice. Mm. So we do the pickup together. So he goes. If there's no parking, he's just you know somewhere double parks. I rush in. I pick them, mm-hmm. and I've already told them. You come, if you're coming out and you're, you know, you can't see me, just make sure you stand at a particular place. That's where we're going to meet. Mm. So for the younger one, I have to pick her from the class. So, but for the boys, they know this is where we meet mommy. Mm. So get them, rush them. Luckily enough, the school is not so far from my home. So I just go home, I drop them. And for now, we have, we have a family with us who uh, is at home. So we just drop them. And then the routine is, uh, they get home, they change, they put their bags in place, they remove their lunch boxes, they put them where they're supposed to be, they have their lunch, they have, uh, I believe, 30 minutes of reading, mm-hmm. just any book of their choice. After that, they have another 30 minutes or 15 minutes of Bible reading. After that, then they have free play. So it's just an ongoing routine of which they are already used to it. Mm -hmm. Some of the days, especially the weekdays, they have activities. So depending on which day they have activities, we try to do, as parents, we try to be there in everything together. Mm -hmm. So like if it's a Sunday, we know that uh, one of my sons has an activity. And depending on the time that he starts, when we just get home, because we finish at 4, so by, let's say, latest 4.30, we are home. My husband just gets home, changes, and gets the other one, takes him to the activity. Mm-hmm. I remain home, I cook. Mm-hmm. And because of these activities, and we want all of us to be involved, so it depends with the days. One day, I'll, I'll make a big meal that the following day I don't have to cook, mm-hmm. so that I can join mm-hmm. for the activity. We just eat the same food. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they... They tend to like, mommy, we're eating the same food.